Here's another useful tip from Mr. Long's Teach Tips. And we're going to be looking at if you've got files online that you want to share with users or with students and you want to be able to, it's too big to send them by email or you, you want to quickly give them access to particular files and you have a Gmail account. If you have a Gmail account and you log on to your Gmail account and then when you come over here to that little waffle part over there, the, all the Google apps that you've got available to you, I want you to go to Google Drive. Now I've already opened up Google Drive and I've created a folder. I put a photo of me with my little dog called Bella. So there we go. So you will have lots of, you'll have space that you've got on Google Drive. It's free. 15 gigs is normally free for you. And then um, obviously you can buy some more space if you need, but yeah, you can, you can obviously create folders and all these different things. I'm already in a folder called example in my drive so you can use it just like an online storage place where we can add new particular files maybe you want to add a google doc or you want to add a, a sheet for like a spreadsheet or you want to add a new folder you can do that or you can upload a file or you can upload a whole folder so if we want to add a folder you can add like a folder like this and go this is our test folder and then we can add some stuff to this particular example so there's now a folder inside the example folder so the test folder is inside there if you've got other files somewhere else like over here i've got this little pdf i'm going to drag it into my google drive into this folder if i just drag it in do you see it automatically uploads the file so there we go it's uploading it and there we go there we got a file that's been added and if we wanted to put a whole folder in we can just click on that folder and whatever's inside that folder will then be put into this particular uh, place in this folder yeah so in the example folder we now have another folder we've got our test folder and our data folder and if I double click on the data we will access to all the stuff that was in there so it's very easy to just drag and drop things into your folder and if I drag like the same file in again it actually says do you want to keep the previous existing file or keep both so there's some lots of lots of little options available to you so it's actually getting the second version of that particular file so when you right click on it, you can actually go manage the different versions and stuff like that, which version you want to use. So this is all setting up your Google Drive with the folders. Now let's say I want my students to be able to access this particular re the resources here. Now there's two ways that we can do it. We can either give them access to one particular file or we can give them access to a folder. And if we give them access to that, for example, the example folder, they will be able to then access everything that's inside there. So it's always nice to know exactly what you are sharing. Um, so that's why I like to keep, like in my Google Drive, I have separate folders which I have shared for different students and I know whatever's in that folder will be available to the students. I don't let them have access to other personal folders, but so that's how you must just organize your, your folder structure. What I'm going to do is when I click, if I want a file, if I want a particular file and I right click on it in Google Drive, you'll see these options. Now there's two ways of sharing it. You can either share or get the link. Now, I'm, first of all, I'm going to share, show you this particular way. So when I share, it asks me who do I want to share it with. So if I start typing here, it's going to obviously add all the people that I've sent messages to. Um, ideally, you want to share it with people that have got a Gmail account. I'm going to type in a particular name quickly. So there we go. go Brandon. There we go. I'm going to add that particular one. So I'm going to add that. And when I click on that particular person, you'll notice that they will notify the people. We can write a little message that must be displayed when they get it. And I can specify whether they have access to edit this folder or if they can just view the stuff in the folder or they can comment on the data in the folder. So those are the options available. Most of the time, I'm just making them view the information. I don't want them to be able to change what I give them. Otherwise, then you have to keep updating it if they accidentally delete something. And that. So that's what I tend to do. Um, but yeah, you can change those properties. Maybe you've got another teacher that must also access these folders and you want them to be able to add things to that folder. Then you could make them an editor. So there we go. So you got all these details. So this is for just that file. You'll notice it's just that file that they have access to. And so you can add multiple people here if you need to and so on. So there we go. That's great. And then you can send an email and they will receive the email and then they will be allowed to be able to access that particular folder. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm not going to do it that way. And then there's another way using a link. Now, if I use a link, the people that have access to it, that's restricted to only them, but you can copy the link. And if I click copy the link, then obviously I can send in an email. Here's the link to the, to the folder. If you just click on it, you'll be able to access it. Now, if I've specified certain people, then only those people 
once they've logged into their Gmail account, will be able to access it. But you can change it. You can change it to anyone with a link. Maybe you don't know all your students' email address. So if you go to this way, then anyone with a link can view. You can obviously change that to all options. I wouldn't suggest changing it to editor. Just let them view. And then now you've made it so that it doesn't matter if you know their email address or not. You can just send them this link. Go look at our video on how to shorten a URL. You want to shorten this URL so that you can send them a little easy one to remember. And then they can access that particular file. So you can do all of those type of things. Now that only applies to one particular file. What happens if I want them to access everything in this folder? And I don't want to do each and every individual file. I just want to share this folder and whatever's in this folder they'll have access to. So if you want that situation, then obviously when you see I'm in the example folder, you can either, if I right click on that folder, I'll have all the same options again to share just that folder or get the link. Or if I'm in this particular folder, I can click on that little arrow there and there's the option to share or get the link. So if I click on share, I'm going to, I'm going to say, okay, that person, there we go. I'm going to make this person be able to edit, make them a viewer if I want them to. And so on. I can go send them a message. And then if I send it, It'll send them an email saying, hey, he has a link to a folder that's been shared with you. And then it'll be connected to their files that they've got or their, their Gmail account. When they go to their Gmail account, they'll look at their shared with me options. And this folder will appear under the shared with me for them. So now when I come here to get the link and stuff like that, so I get the link, I can restrict it to only the people with this link. I can go and I can manage, I can copy the link. I can also go and manage those people. If I click here, you see there's all, all the people I've shared with. So there's the details. These are the people that shared. I can go change their details. I can say, hey, I actually want to make this person an editor now. Or I can transfer ownership to them. Because at the moment, I'm the creator of this particular folder. I can transfer ownership to them because I'm going to be changing schools and I want them to be able to access for their classes, whatever the reason is. So those are all the options available to you when you are sharing a folder. So as I said, whenever you've got your Gmail account um, or your, G your Google Drive, you can create folders over here, lovely little folders. You can drag your files into that folder. And then once you're ready, you can either share the link, get the link for anyone, or send a particular email to particular people. So there we go. That's how I would share files with them. And they will then be able to click on that link and go to this particular folder. Let's just try that quickly. We're going to actually go and share this, get the link for this. We're going to get the link for this particular folder. And I'm going to say it's for anyone with a link. So there you go. I'm going to say, okay, anyone with a link, we're going to copy that link. And now I'm going to go to another window where I have not logged on. So this is not, anyone's not, no one's logged on here. I'm going to just click here. I'm going to paste that particular link. I'm going to paste it in. And there we go. This is what it would look like to the person that's got the link. Ah, do you see they've got, they can see the files. They can see all the things. And although they're not logged on, they can still download everything and stuff like that. So they can download everything. We'll go into a zip file and they'll have access to all of these particular files. So there's the data from that particular one. And so that's how they would access those files. Now, obviously, I don't want them to be that to be open to anyone. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to, hey, you know what? Um, we're not going to make it anyone with a link. We're going to keep it restricted. So you must be registered. I must need your details. I want that, please. So if I go back over here and I refresh this particular folder, it might say that you cannot access it. No, you need to log on. You need to log on if you want to use this file. And if you only if you've been given the access required, can you then view the, the, the whatever the files are in that particular folder. For other videos that can help you as a teacher, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Give us some ideas of videos that you want us to make that can help you in the classroom. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.